I think that night I had a session with Keizo. Mm -hmm. And then Keizo and I went to the Hollywood Palladium for Excision. And then after Excision, I went and I hung out with uh, Swage, uh, GT. And he took me to Exchange because Ghastly was playing. Flux Pavilion was mm -hmm. definitely like the guy for me. And then how did you connect with Jaws? Oh, he slid into my DMs. My freshman year of high school, I gave it a shot, um, and I like I really fell in love with like the the throwing events and like the whole like track and field like environment. No, he hit me up on Twitter and he was like, "Hey, I like some of your music. Like, let's work on something." I was like, "Whoa!" Hi, this is Lauren Engel of Sidewalk Talk today. I'm here with Crank That. What's up? Very requested interview. <laughs> For right. like a year, yeah. <laughs> Let's go. So you were born in, is it Cleveland or? Uh, you know, I tell people I'm from Cleveland. I'm not from Cleveland. I was born in, uh, in sort of Pittsburgh, PA. Oh. Um, my airport is Cleveland, but that's about the extent to which I am from Cleveland. I'm from a smaller city called Youngstown, uh, about like an hour and a half southeast of Cleveland, but mm. nobody knows what that is, so I just tell them. <laughs> <laughs> Are your parents from there as well? Like yeah, my, my dad's from Pittsburgh. My mom is from uh, like the, the Youngstown area. Oh, yes. what do they do? Uh, my dad, uh, he's uh, kind of sort of an accountant. Um, he works for a firm now, but uh, my mom is a high school teacher. Oh, where do you think you got your creative side from? Oh, definitely the both of them. Um, my, my Both of my parents sing. My mom plays piano. Um, I don't know. I mean, my grandparents don't really do that much music stuff, but um, like both of my parents, like I was always around like music growing up, so. Did they ever do it professionally, like singing, your parents? Um, not, not to like the degree that you would think, like professionally, like they had done like some things. They were in like a, a vocal group for a while, uh, mm. like before I was born, that they did some like, some touring things, uh, from what I believe. Um, I haven't actually spoken to them that much about it. But, yeah, <laughs> that's cool. But I don't think they they never really did anything professional per mm. se. I needed some instruments, right? Like piano. Or... Yeah, I did. Um, like when I was when I was younger, uh, my mom forced me to play piano, and then we agreed that I could quit the piano if I picked up literally anything else. So in middle school, I started uh, playing trumpet. Mm. Yeah. Did you like it? No, I didn't really like it. I had <laughs> but braces. You chose it? I had braces in middle school, and, and that shit really hurt. Oh. <laughs> like you, you, you don't really think about that. Like you have to put your mouth on that thing. Yeah. It's like you have pieces of metal on your teeth. Your lips gonna hurt. It's not cool. <laughs> were you, so you, were you doing any like orchestra stuff or? No, no. Or I mean, kind of a fun. Yeah, I mean, I took like piano lessons, but I really wasn't invested into it. Like I, I that's just like as a kid, I didn't care about it. Mm. Um, so like I would do like what my my instructor told me to do, um, and then like I'd practice for like ten minutes a day or whatever. And I'm, like looking back <laughs> at yeah, ten minutes a day, which felt like an eternity. You know, as like an eight year old. But you know, looking back on it, I'm like, wow, I should have done that for way more. <laughs> yeah. How do you describe yourself back then, growing up? Oh, like as a kid growing mm -hmm. up. Yeah. Oh, oh I was weird. Um, I don't know, I wasn't really, uh, I didn't really do anything. Like, all I did was play video games as a kid. Um, I didn't, I wasn't, like, good at sports or anything. Um, like, in, uh, like, when I was, like, younger or anything. So, I really just, like, sat at home and played Call of Duty the majority of my time. Um, I was totally a loser. <laughs> <laughs> did your parents not push you academically, though? Because they're kind of academic people. Yeah, no, I, I was good at school. I was good at school as a kid. Um, and like my parents definitely like pushed me, but I kind of already like had that. Like I was like, it was just easy for you. <laughs> yeah, I mean like it was it was like so and so easy, but I was like, like I wanted to make sure I got good grades. Mm -hmm. So I was very stern with myself about it. At that point back then, what career did you have in mind? Oh my god, um, I don't even know. I probably wanted to do like uh, some sort of like. Um, like design or something oh. like a part of me wanted to be like an architect or something um, another part of me was like now nah, like do something a bit more creative like do some sort of like animation design I didn't really know I had no idea what my life path was gonna be like back then I had no idea at all 
What kind of made you want to like even have gra graphic design in mind or ar architecture? Um, like I like drawing, um, and like I always just like I always felt creative. Um, I just really never found a means to invest myself creative, uh, creatively. Sorry, um, but like for example, like um, just like random video games where you'd have to like build shit. Oh. I would love that and play those for like hours, and I'd just like make things and like do them like as good as I possibly could. Like I was like super <laughs> invested in in uh, in middle school. I was like super invested in Minecraft, <laughs> um, and I just like spent a ridiculous amount of hours playing that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I really didn't have like an outlet for myself. I wasn't. I didn't know like what to do. But I always like felt like I sort of just like had like creativity to invest somewhere. Mm -hmm. What were your favorite subjects or subjects you were good at? Uh, okay, well my, my favorite subject was probably math. Um, my, I, I clicked with math and for the sake of it, my least favorite subject was reading because I, I'm not good at reading. Um, so, <laughs> math for sure, math for you sure. You never thought of doing anything with math, maybe engineering or? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I mean, because like, you know, like how like school ecosystems are when you're, when you're strong at something, everybody's like definitely advocating for you to like, you know, continue pursuing that. So it's like, I, I had like strong like math scores and whatnot. So people would, you know, tell me like, oh, you could do like math in college. You could do like engineering. Um, but I just really didn't feel like it was for me, so. Mm -hmm. You were good at sports though, or was it just like towards the end? When, when I was in high school, um, when I was in high school, I like did, um, I did like distance running. I did like cross country, um, like my freshman year. Um, at the end of like my freshman year, I started uh, messing around with uh, some like throwing events in track and field. Um, and a really good buddy of mine now, uh, his name is Matthias. Uh, when I was in middle school, he was like a senior in high school and he was doing throwing events like in particular He was doing like the discus throw. Oh my gosh. Um, that's what you did? That, that, yeah, that's what I did as well. <laughs> that's what I competed in also in oh, high really? school. Oh yeah. really? No way, that's It's like awesome. such a random thing, but you're probably the first person I who like, and I did yeah, shot yeah. put also. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, 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 I did the shot put too. Um, I wasn't like that good at the shot put, but um, but yeah, so like Matthias was like really good at doing the discus and like I was like a very impressionable middle schooler. I was like, oh like, that sounds really weird, but I feel like I would like that, and I feel like I might be able to be good at that. So, like my freshman year of high school, I gave it a shot, um, and I like I really fell in love with like the the throwing events and like the whole like track and field like environment, um, and I like just like kept working at it all through high school and like got pretty good at it. Um, but yeah, like. Uh, I guess I was I was good enough that mm -hmm. college just picked me up. I feel like people who do discus has like pretty good like full body and also upper body strength. Yeah, well I definitely didn't. That took a long time. <laughs> um, but um, I, I, I for me uh, I really didn't have any reason to like be good at it. Um, I wasn't athletic. Like I sucked at basketball. I really wasn't any good at like football. I just like wasn't I wasn't like the athletic like kid that like mm -hmm. um, like you would imagine to like do like sports. Um, I think it was just because like the nature of doing that sort of um, event is a lot of repetition. It's just mm -hmm. doing the same thing over and over and over again. It's much more of like a commitment and time investment thing than it is like an athleticism thing. Granted, like I, you have to like have a starting point, but again, like, I really was not athletic at all. So, mm -hmm. um, so but, but yeah. So the first few times you threw the discus, were you good or was it just no, I was crappy not good. throw? <laughs> no, I was not good. I don't think there's ever been anything in my entire life where the first time I did it, I was good. That's just, that's not how mm -hmm. it works for me. How did um, you realize that you wanted to concentrate on it though? Like if the first few times were like... Um, I don't know. I, I guess like, I, I think like something was just calling out to me and sort of telling me that like, um, like this, I, I think I really just thought that like it could be like fun and it was worth a try. Mm. Um, I think that was the first time where even though I wasn't like good at it, um, I sort of felt like a potential in myself to grow in it um, and like get better at it. Um, and I think that's really all it took for me to like latch on because I, I hadn't like felt that with any other like anything else before, uh, like no sports or anything at all. Mm -hmm. how, how often were you training? Um, I mean, like all throughout high school, I was I was doing it like year round, every single day. Um, oh wow, like a few hours a day. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like my schedule in high school was I would very much like go to school, get done, um, 
depending on whether or not we were in season, I would have to like go to practice. If we were out of season, I'd like go like like lift and work out like mm. every single day. And so. then for college, did you know for sure that you wanted to get a scholarship through it? Um, I mean, like in my later years of high school, it definitely became apparent that it was a possibility, uh, especially like in what I was telling you, like with uh, my friend Matthias, he kind of was like the forerunner before me. He paved the way and like I was able to like see the possibilities of like what was obtainable like by watching him and what he was doing. And he actually, he got a scholarship to the same exact school that oh. I did. It was just, he was there four years earlier. How did he become nationally ranked? There was this one time and I threw it really far <laughs> and uh, they put me on that board and I was like, oh, there we are. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, I, I like never really like had uh, any, I don't know how to explain it. Like I didn't really like aspire to be like nationally ranked. Of course, like once, once I was like there, like I wanted to like, you know, compete like nationally, like on the national level, on the like the elite level. But like, um, because, because of the way that that like event works, it's not really like, unless you're doing a really big competition, you're never with like the people around the country that are like throwing super, super far. So for me, um, I was, I was like throwing decently far. Um, but it was really just like me sort of competing against myself a lot of the time. Like, mm -hmm. like just like a very, a very internal thing. And then growing up, you were mostly listening to T-Pain or oh, more yeah. hip hop, right? Oh yeah. No, I was not cultured at all. I had, I had no, uh, no sort of uh, attractive music listening personalities to myself at all. I listened to, uh, I was into like Young Money. I was into like Chris Brown. Mm -hmm. I love T-Pain. Um, yeah, I was very much like a, like a R&B and like hip hop kid, which was like really weird. I don't know why that was my thing. <laughs> Were um, your friends around you also listening to that? Uh, kind of, like everybody like, everybody that like I grew up around like like rap and stuff, but I mean, that's pretty much like where I was at as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I mean like thinking about it now, like everybody that I see like do these interviews or whatever, they're always like, oh yeah, like I listen to a lot of like punk and I'm like, yeah, I just never really got into it. I don't know what was wrong with me. <laughs> I think it was just because like the people that I were around, like it just wasn't really that thing. So mm -hmm. I also feel like I'm a little bit younger than like, yeah. just like a couple years, but I feel like that's enough to really make a difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And from electronic music, you were first really into David Guetta, right? Yeah, yeah, I mean, um, like when he was doing his like 2011, 2012 stuff where he was really doing the heavy pop crossover, um, I mean, like I said, I was very uncultured. I didn't know anything. Um, so like when he was doing, you know, dance music with very recognized artists, um, that was the way that I was introduced to it. I didn't really have that. Like, I didn't like discover uh, like underground like house or like the techno scene or whatever, like as like a, as like a, a child, like a 13 year old. That just wasn't what happened. I discovered very mainstream pop driven dance music and I really liked it. Um, mm -hmm. And that's just how I found my way into the scene. And then, of course, from then I found everything and everything, um, so on and so forth. But that was, yeah, it was like uh, the early David Getter. No, not the early David Getter. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't mean to slander at all. Um, but the, the David Getter records that were early to me that he did um, in that era, the, mm -hmm. the, you know, the early 2010 is, yes. Do you remember who showed you Skrillex? Yeah, it was uh, actually um, my one friend from high school. We uh, we were like co-valedictorians in our super small ass high school um, in our freshman year. She showed me Scary Monsters and Nice Sprites. Oh. Yeah, she did. She did like dance, and I think they had to like do a routine to it. Mm -hmm. um, and she was like, "I think you might like this." Uh, I listened to it, and I was like, "Holy shit, this is really cool." And then your parents got you Fruity Loops. Was it for your birthday or? Oh, Christmas. Christmas. Christmas 20, uh, no, 2012. Christmas 2012. Yeah, they bought me Fruity Loops um, and definitely changed my life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Were you already cranked up by then or did you have a oh, different no. moniker? You know, I had a couple. We're not going to talk about them. <laughs> um, but none at that point. At that point, I was very much just like having fun with it and like, enjoying just like not knowing anything and trying to make music. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Who are you listening to? Cause your music early on with all the remixes didn't sound like David Guetta pop music. Yeah, yeah, no. Um, I mean like in like the early stages of uh, 
cranked out, I definitely had a bit more of like an idea of what I liked and like uh, what I wanted to do myself uh, with music. <clears throat> but like, um, I, I really was into uh, like Flux Pavilion was mm -hmm. definitely like the guy for me. Um, I like loved his sound and <laughs> probably spent hours on hours like trying to imitate it. Um, obviously Skrillex. I really got into Avicii, uh, Swedish House Mafia. Um, uh, yeah, I, I was like, uh, I was into like, um, like some more of like the edgier side of dubstep as well. Um, that was like when UKF was like mm. slamming on YouTube. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I, I really loved that channel and I would listen to that like every single day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you remember how your Trap Queen remix got so big? Um, I, I would be lying if I told you yes because I really don't know how it did. Did you share it to um, blogs and stuff? I didn't share it to anybody. I uploaded it onto SoundCloud. Um, and the first day, uh, it got 25,000 streams maybe, which like oh, wow. SoundCloud was more popping back then and like remixes of like rappers or like pop stars or whatever had a lot more potential to like attract attention as like clickbait. Um, so that was a good number for me. Uh, like 25,000 in the first day was a really, really good number for me for sure, but it wasn't anything that was like super mind blowing. Like it wasn't anything like crazy. But within the next two weeks, it only kept growing more and more and more, which normally like back then on SoundCloud, if you'd put up a track, it would get a lot like the first day and mm -hmm. then it would be less and less every yeah. single day afterwards um, until it sort of just like plateaued. <clears throat> that grew more and more every single day and by the time excuse me by the time it was a month old I think it had 8 million streams Wow. yeah it really really just sort of snowball effect um, yeah I, I didn't do anything at all I remember there were a few things that happened um, um, a Viner, and I can't remember his name. That was back when like Vine was super popular. Um, a Viner uh, uploaded like a Vine with that song like in the background. It was like a like a like a little skit type thing, mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, and like that was like a really big Vine. So obviously you got a lot of attention off of that. Um, the YouTube channel Trap City picked it up and uploaded it um, again when it was still like in its really 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 early stages. Um, but nevertheless, uh, like, I think all those things sort of like working together, like very organically, was just part of the process that like made it start to like really go off. But mm -hmm. I did not do a single thing like for that. I what, did my normal yeah. process of just uploading the song. What year in college was this? Not even college, I was a oh. senior in high school. Oh wow. So Actually, I think I, I was either like just finishing up my senior year or it was like the last like couple months. It was it was like right at the end of like high school for me. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. When did you drop out? Like within college, were you a freshman or something? No, I dropped out halfway through my sophomore year, so okay. I did three semesters. Yeah. Where was your career at the point where you dropped out? Were you playing a decent amount of shows and everything? Um, I mean, I I wasn't really playing that many shows. Um, like I had like internet hype, I guess. Um, or whatever that even is <laughs> but um I, I really like wasn't in a position that was like um I don't know how to explain it um it was just like uh it, it was like it was a tough like position for me because I knew that if I wanted to continue to like grow like cranked at and like musically and everything and just like even give that a shot it's like that opportunity isn't going to be around forever and it definitely wasn't going to be around for me like four years, I guess like two and a half years more so, mm -hmm. two and a half years later. Um, so it was basically just that I really wanted to capitalize on the opportunity. Um, and like I, like I said, I really wasn't playing shows. I wasn't really doing anything. Um, I was like having some conversations with like music business people for the first time. Um, but I was, I was in a very infantile stage of like cranked at, uh, still, um, so yeah, I I definitely just had to like kind of suck it up and do it. Mm -hmm. Were yeah. you afraid of your finances though? 
Or where, did you move back in with your parents? Yeah, I moved back in with my parents. Yeah, um, so you didn't have that many costs anyway. No, yeah, no, I, um, like, that, I mean, it wasn't really the concern about that as much as it was, like, opportunity cost. It was mm -hmm. because, like, I had, like, a college scholarship. It's like, I'm forfeiting my free ticket to go to school, yeah. you know? Like, that's a, that's a, it's kind of a not normal thing to do. <laughs> it's just, like, say, yo, yeah, I'm gonna sacrifice my very vast amount of college scholarship money in order to go be a DJ. That like, that sounds <laughs> stupid. Um, and maybe one day it will prove to be stupid. No <laughs> way. Actually, how did you come up with your name? Uh, oh, we don't talk about that. Now, um, I actually have a, like a thing, like a game I've played with a bunch of like interview uh, sources where like, I'll give them like a clue, <laughs> but I won't tell the whole thing. It's really embarrassing and like, it's not even creative at all. Like some people get really cool names from whatever, but. What do you change your name then? You don't like it? Oh, I don't know that I'd change it. I feel like I'm stuck with it by this point. But no, it's not that I don't like it. It's just that like definitely when I made it up, uh, yeah. I didn't really know like what I was doing at all. Uh, it's an embarrassing story, but it's fine. <laughs> and your parents have been supportive of you. Too. Yeah, yeah, oh, absolutely. That's so cool. Um, my parents, uh, yeah, no, my parents have supported me in whatever I've done. Um, and music is just like the latest thing to to you know be be that for me uh, so they've always been very supportive and and they will i'm sure continue to do so mm -hmm. and i'm very very appreciative for that how long have you been doing it full time now well we are in november so we're coming up on two years oh wow yeah i started i started full time well because i dropped out um halfway through my sophomore year so i really started in january of 2017 so it's about to be January 2019, so coming up on two years. And then how did you connect with Jaws? Oh, he slid into my DMs. <laughs> <laughs> no, he hit me up on Twitter and he was like, hey, I like some of your music, like, let's work on something. I was like, whoa! <laughs> I freaked out for sure. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, he's like, he's the homie now. He's a really, really good guy. And I'm, I'll always be like grateful for like what he's done to like support me and my music. Um, mm -hmm. But, oh yeah, it was literally just as simple as he DM'd me. And then we started started working on the song we put out called I Hold Still. Um, it took a year and a half, but we got it out. <laughs> Ow. Must have been crazy for you to have a song with T-Pain, right? Because you were listening to him. Oh yeah, of course. That was ridiculous. Um, yeah, I, I still, I, I like forget about that. And then I remember and I'm like, oh, like I actually have a song with this guy. It was, it was a bit of like a weird process. Um, we, uh... There's this company called Dubset, which is like uh, I believe that they are really working towards like um, like the goal of like helping artists do like unofficial remixes and stuff like that, and like getting them cleared. Um, that process. Mm -hmm. So they did like a campaign with T Pain, where they like went to him and they were like, "Yo, like if you have anything unreleased, like shoot it our way." He sent them some vocals, and then they sort of just like shipped out the vocals to like producers and were like. Like just like a, a small handful. They just shipped them out to some producers and were like, yo, here's like a T-Pain acapella. Like, do you want to make like a song out of this? It wouldn't be a remix because it's unreleased. It would be like a proper song. Um, so I did that and I like, I got to have a song be called like, you know, Crank That featuring T-Pain, which is like insane for me. Yeah, so it was, it was like a total like personal victory. <laughs> I want to like, I still have like yet to meet him. Like I've spoken with him like on the internet a couple oh. of times but I hope like hopefully one day we actually get like the proper like yeah. session and can rock out for a bit <laughs> yeah that'd be that'd be sick how about with Slender oh those guys uh oh that's actually funny um they did a show in New York City uh in 2016 like literally right before I dropped out uh this was actually like a small factor into like me dropping out believe it or not mm. um they had a show in new york city um my buddy marco and i drove out to new york city literally to see this show uh, i think at the time i told them i'm like yeah i'm in town and i was like can i come through and i was like no like we drove there for the show <laughs> um so like they like guest listed us and like let us come like backstage and whatnot and like we got to like chill out and like i got to you know like meet uh derek and scott and like tyler because uh, they were doing the good vibrations thing for the first time mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, and like uh, I believe it was Scott like invited me he's like yo like 
next time you're in LA or whatever, like, uh, like let's start working on something. I was like, whoa! Like again, it was the same thing as like when like Sam DM'd me. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so like I flew out to LA like a couple weeks later, and we started working, um, and that's actually like what became Neil before me, which just came out like two months ago. Still go to school. You're not gonna be able to go do these sessions, and I'm like, true. We're gonna drop out. <laughs> <laughs> How about with Gasly? You have a story for that? Oh, sure, yeah. Well, so I was telling you last night, um, I went and I like played exchange for the first time. I guess that's improper because um, it had to have been very early in 2017. I was in town for whatever um, and I had uh, linked up with some friends, uh, one of them being um, Swage, another producer. Um, and. We were just like kicking it that night. We were just like hanging out. Uh, I actually can't even remember like exactly what we did that night. But um, uh, at one point, or wait, was that? <laughs> I think what had happened, I think that night I had a session with Kezo. Mm -hmm. And then Kezo and I went to the Hollywood Palladium for Excision. And then after Excision, I went and I hung out with uh, Swage, uh, GT. And he took me to exchange because Gasly was playing, which was his first, like, he, he had, like, done, like, I guess, like, uh, like, reading his posts, he did, like, a residency at exchange for, like, forever. Yeah. But that was, like, his first, like, exchange play as, like, Gasly, like, since, like, he, like, popped off big time, like, as mm -hmm. a DJ. Um, so, like, I went there, and that was actually the first time that, like, I got to meet him. Like, we had talked on like the internet whatever uh, he had like played a lot of my music but that was the first time that I met him was like literally during his set <clears throat> and he like it was actually like really sick he like shouted me out like in front of everybody and was like yo like let's like play back to back and I was like wow <laughs> so yeah that was that was how that went down mm -hmm. how about for your Vegas residency Ooh, um that, well, I started doing uh, some like opening slots for uh, for Hakkasan in last year, because this is 2018, so like the end of last year, um, I was doing uh, some opening stuff. I think I did like uh, an opening set before Party Favor, and then like another one before Jaws. Um, and I really didn't know what I was doing, but um, I guess like the Hakkasan group really like believed in me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like. Thank you guys, bless you guys. Uh, I obviously didn't nail it the first time at all. Vegas is a weird beast, but um, mm -hmm. yeah, so um, luckily somehow, somehow I scored a Vegas residency from that. And yeah. I'm very, very grateful, mm -hmm. yeah. What were your, what were your uh, inspirations for Need Some Money, the music video? Oh, um, so for that, um, I made the song and I kind of just like came up with something in my head uh, actually, that's not the original music video idea that I had. Um, I made the song. I actually like thought of the idea for the video, um, and then like I gave it to my label. They're like, "It's too expensive. We can't do it." I'm like, "Damn it!" I want to know the idea. You can't say it, though, right? What's that? What was the original idea? Uh, oh, I don't remember. It was something <laughs> about like. Uh, actually, I don't remember at all. Um, <laughs> but then I like came up with something new that was like more low budget. <laughs> Uh, and that's like what it turned into. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> when did you sign with that label? Uh, I signed with Asylum back in, I think I officially signed the paperwork in like 2017, like the end of 2017, mm. August-ish, relatively yeah. middle, I guess more so. How would you say your music has changed compared to the early songs you made? Um, well, for one, like when I started making like early remixes and stuff, I definitely wasn't in a place as a producer where I was able to make like full songs. Um, like the process that I did for remixing was I would take like a song, literally just as it is, no parts or anything. I would just take the song and I would like add my instruments to it, make like a build up, make a drop, and that was pretty much it. But I didn't really have the skills in order to make like a full song and I don't even know if I I mean even in like 2016 I don't really think that I had the skills to like make a full song so I think like for me <laughs> actually being able to make like songs is very new like within the past two years and 
It's actually something I just realized, which is kind of crazy. What was the turning point that you realized that you kind of were like sick of making remixes or to put yourself to the next level you had to do original? Yeah, I just wanted to like, like, uh, sort of push myself like creatively. Like I've always been like very internal about everything. And it's like, if I know that like I can't do something and I want to do it, like I'm gonna like get pissed at myself. Like I want to be able to do it. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, it was like, I was doing the remixes because they were fun, right? And like, um, I never like expected anything to come of it. I was just like, you know, having fun making remixes. <clears throat> but um, yeah, like at, at a certain point, like I got to the, the stage where I'm like, okay, like you need to like push yourself way, way, way harder. So, yeah, I, I really invested a lot of time into trying to create <coughs> original music. Mm -hmm. How would you say you've as a person compared to when you were younger? Oh, I'd say a lot, in a bunch of different ways. Well, I, I think, like, the, the main thing, and this, like, was very much, uh, like, taught to me when I was doing track and field, is, like, I very, very much developed, like, motivation, like, drive to, like, do things. Um, I didn't have that at all before before doing track. I didn't have any sort of that for anything really at all um, So now nowadays like as an adult I feel very driven and very motivated like in in everything that I do um, Which is like still like a growing and new feeling for me, but um I'd say that that's the number one way that like I've grown since like being a kid. It's just I feel a lot more like motivated and determined mm -hmm. to like just like do good yeah you know? what would you say have been your biggest challenges so far in your life i mean honestly i live a really blessed life <laughs> um <laughs> that's good yeah yeah i don't i don't i don't really think i mean it, it sounds like super pretentious i think like dropping out of school is probably one of the harder things like like decision wise because i'm mm -hmm. not really like um I'm not really like a, like a confrontational person like when it comes to that sort of thing, especially like really big decisions like that. Mm -hmm. um, so that was like very anxiety inducing for many, many, many weeks. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. Uh, I'm sure there's been like other things as well, but yeah. like I said, I live like a very blessed life and I'm very, very grateful for that. And yeah, mm -hmm. I, I haven't really had like a bunch of like hardships per yeah. se. Yeah. What does love mean to you? Oh, I mean, love is like, you ask this in other ones, don't you? Yeah, I ask it yeah, you every, ask every one. Yeah. Oh, this is weird. I just got like flashbacks of like, uh, like when I was watching the Nightmare one. Uh, <laughs> oh, I don't remember what he said though. But love is very important. I think that there's a lot of definitions of love. Um, and I think like, when it comes down to it, what love is, is just like, well, you didn't ask me the meaning of love, so now I'm rambling. but love is just like what you and your life really don't think and I, I mean like to the next like the highest like level of even saying so what you cannot like be without or mm. so I think there's like different kinds of love absolutely there's like relationship love there's like passion love as in like um passion for like what you're doing in life etc um but I really just feel like, like, uh, like to me, love is what I in my life, like things in life that I really cannot like live without. Like I don't think that I would be able to like live without. Mm, I love that. What do you love about your girlfriend's personality? Oh, she's really sweet. Um, <laughs> she's really, really funny. Um, uh, we just, uh, we just like have like a really, really good, like, like we, we like. Um, resonate like on a very emotional level it's hard mm -hmm. to like explain like uh like words wise but um yeah like like we just like uh like i just like feel like a, a bond and like a connection with mm -hmm. her that like <clears throat> you don't really like feel with other people like yeah, that you know i love that last question what do you want to be remembered for oh that's tough um i don't know i think like at the end of the day if if i was remembered for I really think that all I want to do is inspire. Um, all I really care to do, like, with music is just, like, inspire other people. Be that um, people that are listening uh, in whatever way that I could inspire them to just, like, live to their fullest and, like, experience their best life. Or, you know, other, other musicians with, like, aspirations of, like, taking it on. Um, I want to inspire them to, like, 
love music and like pursue like whatever you know what what they want to do I want to I want to be able to inspire people to to just like take on um, what whatever like comes their way that's literally like like I have like this slogan because like my name's cranked out so we have like gear up and like the whole like the whole like thing behind gear up is basically just like get yourself like ready get going and like take on anything and everything that like comes your way because like that is like how to me that is like how you should like live your life and it's just like i want to inspire people to do yeah that. i love that bye bye